All right, so we are going to talk about creating a collaborative classroom with Canva. We are going to take a look at whiteboarding today and um, all of the amazing tools. We do have a few new updates um, and some AI tools that are now a part of um, this session. So we are going to definitely talk about that as well. If you were a Jamboard user, I know this is perfect timing since Jamboard did sunset as of October 1st. So um, Canva whiteboards, Canva presentations are kind of a great alternative to the Jamboard um, collaboration tools. So we'll talk through all of that today. So we're going to dive right in and just uh, really quickly touch on what Canva is if you're a newer user. So Canva at its core is a visual communications work suite. So we have everything from documents to whiteboards, which is more of that infinite space, presentations, social media, video, print products, and even websites. And Canva's mission is to empower everyone to create, collaborate, and communicate in the classroom and beyond. So turning teachers and students into creators in an easy to use space. And we know that collaboration has never been more important. So making sure our students are able to collaborate both in person and digitally. Um, this is just an interesting statistic from our set of statistics from an article that was actually in Forbes that 83% of employees rely on technology for collaboration and 60% of millennials would collaborate more if it were visual. So Canva combines both of those things, the ability to collaborate in real time and to make that collaboration really visual and also teach those great digital collaboration skills. So we're going to kind of focus on whiteboarding today. Everything I'm going to show you can also be done in a presentation slide, but our Canva whiteboards are more of that infinite space. So you have more of that space to collaborate and to um, build and create in. So what is a whiteboard? So we have a fun little video. <laughs> going to talk a little bit about ways you can use whiteboards in kind of three folds. So one being how a teacher can use it. So why would you as a teacher use a Canva whiteboard in your classroom? And again, I know we're focusing on collaboration, but we also want to give you these ideas as we think through Canva whiteboarding. So one of those, uh, some of these, and I'm not going to read them all, I will share these slides and the recording um, afterwards so you will have these. But some of the ways that we see Canva whiteboards used for teachers um, are things like parent communication repositories and newsletter repositories. So having one link that they can go to every time and then having all of your pieces on that same link and adding to it each week or each month or however often you're communicating. Same things with like a homework or a resource hub, just kind of building those repositories for students or families to be able to go back to. Also gives you space to do something like um, unit planning or curriculum mapping. Classroom use. So why would you use Canva whiteboards with you and your students? So some of the ways we see them use kind of collaboratively in the classroom or for things like morning meetings, if you're in that elementary space, um, it kind of gives you the visual and it allows you to have a little more space to add all the tools that you need. Um, this one probably is how I see it used most. It's that uh, mind mapping, brainstorming, um, formative assessment, even kind of polling kind of all across the board here, um, or even that um, parking lot questions, suggestions, exit tickets. I feel like it's kind of all under that blanket of those visual thinking strategies or those dipstick check-ins, those types of things. And then why would you, why would students choose to create a whiteboard? What are reasons they would come in and grab those? Um, it, you know, they can do things like create virtual exhibits or really create visual storytelling and visual stories, um, timelines, project planning for themselves. Group work is a great template search term in Canva, and we have lots of great project planning templates that allow students to kind of take ownership of that, be able to collaborate, and be able to have those project plans, um, and then finish a group project in a little bit easier way to be able to also communicate as they're working both in class and asynchronously. So just like to give a quick, you know, kind of overview of different ways you can use it. We are going to talk about templates today, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to look through Canva templates um, and then um, talk about some of the tools available. 
So when it comes to whiteboards and Canva whiteboards, there are two main ways to get to those whiteboards. One of them is it's its own design type. So for example, when you're on Canva's homepage, there is a whiteboard button in that top row of icons, or you can search using that keyword whiteboard. So whiteboards are their own design type where you can search and find them. However, you can also expand any single slide in a presentation to a whiteboard. Um, you can do with a few other design types, but presentations is where we really focus. Um, you can open any presentation, have all of your slides, and then you can expand any single slide to a whiteboard to give you more of that infinite space. There's sort of re different reasons and different ways that you would use each one. If you have just a standalone whiteboard, it could be just that quick collaborative activity. Maybe you want to give instructions or um, notes or something on a few sets of on a few slides and then have that um, open-ended piece for brainstorming, um, you have the flexibility to do it either way. You can also lock things down on pages. You can still use all of those tools from presentations like record yourself. Um, and so that is also another reason that maybe it's easier to start in a presentation because it gives you a little bit more of those tools that you would normally have um, on that whiteboard space. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit about finding whiteboards and then I'm gonna and then we'll talk about features. Again, on Canvas homepage, you have a whiteboard icon here, whiteboard. You can always come up here to the search bar and search using that keyword whiteboard. You can just search I like and whiteboard as a search term. So I'm gonna search education. I am gonna make sure in the glow up, sometimes it doesn't automatically default. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Canva templates and make sure it is set to Canva templates. And then I'm gonna see, so again, I chose education whiteboard. You can kind of use your own search terms and you'll notice that I have all of these whiteboard options. So lots of different styles, different topics. The great part about Canva is everything is customizable. So if you find a Venn diagram you like and it's not the right topic or you find something that's the right organization, it's easy just to change the words, change a little bit of the graphics um, and kind of have some fun with it. So again, lots of different options in here as you search. If you do go into that blank whiteboard, I want to give just a couple kind of tips and tricks, and then I'm going to let you try on your own, and then we'll work on a few things together. When you get dropped into a whiteboard under templates, if you came into a blank one, um, you can always add templates here. It doesn't have pages, so it's not like a presentation where every page is going to be its own. If I select multiple templates, it's just going to keep dropping them into this infinite space. So if I add this one, it's going to add it right in here. So I have this template. If I were to go in and find another one and add a sec, it's going to just add it alongside. So again, whiteboards are that infinite space. When it comes to whiteboard navigation, whiteboard <clears throat> down here at the bottom, you have a little zoom slider so I can zoom in and zoom out. As you zoom in, I can use the you know toolbars to scroll over or scroll up and down. If you have a trackpad on you know laptop, you can kind of use your fingers. One of the great tips with whiteboards too is if you hold down spacebar, if you watch my mouse, it'll turn from that pink cursor to the little hand. If I hold down spacebar, I can grab the canvas and then click and hold and drag it around. So I can zoom in, I can zoom out using, again, the sliders. Something that happens a lot in whiteboards is sometimes so down here at the bottom under the scroll bar, there is a little percentage number here. If you click on the percentage and you choose the word fit, it will always bring you back to the middle. So if you get lost, you can always come in here, choose fit, and it will bring you back to the center. So if I were to take this slide, um, hover over the slide, choose the three dots in the upper right corner, and choose expand to whiteboard, it would make that slide a whiteboard. So it would give you that infinite space. Similar, yeah, great question. How do I present? So if you want it to be interactive as you're presenting, like you want to be able to write or draw or things like that, the best way to do it is just leave it like this. If you want to get rid of your things, um, I don't think my laptop's going to let me do it here because I usually have a keyboard, but you can also go into kind of full screen. I think F11 will let you go full screen. Depending on your browser, you can make your um, browser tab full screen, but you would just open a tab and be able to use that whiteboard um, on an interactive panel. The touch screen when you be enabled, you can draw, you can write, you can add graphics, things like that. Good question. So again, under the homepage, you can search for the templates. 
education whiteboard, whiteboard, those types of things. The other thing I'll share is we have done a really amazing job in our design school, and we have created some templates that are not in our, I'll paste this in the chat in just a second, but it looks like, like this. Um, but it will get some templates that again are not in our design school library should look something like this. Let me give it a little refresh and see. There we go. So these are all templates that we've created that are not in our Canva template library. And so these are just fun that you can make a copy of as well. These will be in the resources that I share. And then we've also shared some search terms. So if you want to look for these whiteboards or these presentations and then expand to a whiteboard, um, we've just kind of given you some extra resources here. So, all right. So some great questions in the chat. All right. Is it similar to other tools? I will say the one thing with Canva whiteboards is Canva whiteboards <clears throat> do have the same tools as the rest of Canva designs for the most part. And especially if you go from a presentation to a whiteboard, which again, if you have slides, you just hover over the slide, click those three dots and choose expand to whiteboard. It'll expand any single slide to a whiteboard even if it's the only slide in the deck. Um, and so really it'll allow you to have those same capabilities. If you start in a whiteboard, you lose just a couple pieces of functionality, not really a ton, um, but I do want to just pop into a, a presentation and expand just to show you some of those tools as well. So I'm gonna go into a presentation and again, choose those three dots, expand to a whiteboard. You'll know it's a whiteboard because it has these dashed lines around the edges down here. And then I'll have the dot grid on the back. So those dash lines and the dot and the little icon, that's how you know. So a couple things when it comes to tools. If you have a whiteboard open, or even if you just open a blank one, um, we can talk through a few of the tools. Again, under design, these are just going to be your templates. So if you want to drop a template in um, so that you have something to work in, you can. Again, everything is customizable, so you can easily um, change wording, adjust things to fit your content area, those types of things. I might grab one that has a few sticky notes on it so I can have something in here as well. We'll take a Venn diagram and drop it in. So again, I'll, and these tips, you can always, again, get rid of things. I'm gonna delete those just so I have a little bit bigger space to highlight. So you have design, <clears throat> just our template library. You have elements on the left. Elements are just like they are in any other Canva design type. You can add graphics, you can add shapes, you can add you know, photos, videos, all kinds of things. One of the things that you will see a little bit more prevalently in whiteboards when you click on elements is the section here that says sticky notes. You can get to sticky notes in a presentation. So notice when I go into presentation and elements, it's not a section here, but I can search for it and it will come up. So I can find sticky notes in a regular presentation or another design type, but under whiteboards, under elements, they have an entire section. Sticky notes are different than shapes or graphics. <clears throat> There's a number of things you can do with them. Typically by default, sticky notes have names turned on. Students can turn the name off, so I understand that's not ideal, um, but you could have you know, small groups do it. You can add your own ideas, um, things like that. So you have those sticky notes. A really great shortcut, especially when you're in whiteboards, is if you press S on your keyboard, you'll get a sticky note. So S for sticky note as well. One of my favorite tools that's a little bit newer for sticky notes or kind of feature is if you have students responding, maybe it's in columns, maybe it's on a Venn diagram. However, whatever that looks like, this could be for an exit ticket. It could be, again, brainstorming, small group collaboration. If you have students using sticky notes to respond, if you click and drag and select all the sticky notes, even if you get notice I got all the other stuff in there, that's okay. So I clicked and hold, drag and select all the sticky notes. In my toolbar at the top, at the end, I get this option that says sort. So I can sort my sticky notes. So this is great if you wanted to have students respond, you can sort them by name so you could see which student responded. You can sort them by color. So maybe I've seen this used a little bit with teachers where they have students maybe respond with questions in blue and observations in green, or maybe you're working in small groups, but you're in one whiteboard and every group has their own color of sticky note. You could sort those by color to see what types of response you're getting. And then you can also use AI to sort it by topic. So this is awesome. Um, I can choose the sort by topic. 
it's going to scan the text on the sticky notes, find common themes, and it's going to reorganize them by topic. So these were kind of placeholders, so these probably aren't the greatest example, um, but notice it gave me some topics of things that um, it felt like the sticky note uh, was reflecting. So I think about this in the classroom and I think about ways, you know, if you did an exit ticket and you had 30 kids respond or 30 kids times five periods a day if you're secondary, um, you could easily hop in, grab all their sticky notes, sort that have them all write one question or one thing they're still confused about from the lesson, sort it by topic, and it will kind of rearrange and organize by theme to give you an idea of where students work uh, confused or what they have questions about. The one thing I will say about sticky notes and the sorting is less is more. So if they are writing multiple questions, have them write one question on every sticky note on in on multiple sticky notes versus five questions on one sticky note. Otherwise, that kind of doesn't know what to group together. But again, selecting all, choosing sort, and then sorting those sticky notes. So it has to be a sticky note. That's the key, but that's why they're so they're a little bit more prevalent right here in whiteboards. And again, you could also do this in presentations or something else. You just have more space to do it in whiteboards. So that's one option. That's one tool I really like is that sticky note and then the ability to sort. Under elements, you also have a section here that is labeled shapes. So these also have a specific use that you can do that's a little bit hidden, and it's one of my favorite options. So under elements, if I go into this shapes section and I grab any one of these basic shapes, I can, not only can I type text right in my shape, so all of our shapes have text boxes built in. So I can just double click and type right in my shape. At the top, I can also change the color, different things like that. I can have some a little bit more kind of flexibility. But when I click on my shape in my little smaller floating toolbar here, under the three dots, if I scroll down, I have an option that says enable quick flow. So when I choose enable quick flow, my shape now gets these arrows. And then I can click on those arrows and it will attach another shape to my original one. Think about like flow charts, brainstorms, mind maps, timelines. You could go all the way in one direction. Super quick and easy ways for students to be able to kind of visualize and make those connections using those shapes. So I'll show that again, then I'll show you a fun trick that goes with it. So again, under elements, I'm gonna go into shapes. When I go into shapes and I click on any one of these shapes, I can type right in it. I can also change the color. And again, I can also add a border. So this is kind of fun too. Um, up at the top, I have my color block. I also have this line icon that lets me add a border. I can also change the border color. So I always think it's fun to add a little gradient, but you can add, you know, you can change the border color too. And then when you have your shape in the smaller floating toolbar, if you click the three dots and go to the bottom, you have the option that says enable quick flow, and then you get those arrows. So what's really fun is if you change your border and then you start your quick flow, the line will match the border. I know it's really silly, but it's cute. <laughs> um, so that's kind of fun as well. And then not only can you double click in the shape to add text, but you can also double click on the line and add text directly to the line. So if you want to show how those ideas are connected, if you wanted to kind of add some text, again, the bigger the, the bolder, the border, the bigger the text is, but you can easily hop in and add the text straight to the line. So again, double clicking on um, the, the shape will add text, the line, you can use that quick flow um, and things like that. With those lines, the lines are defaulted to be kind of that elbow. So if you click on the line, you can also adjust that. You can have straight lines, curved lines. You can um, change the endpoints if you don't want arrows. Um, if I have a whiteboard on my smart board and share with my kids a Google Classroom, will I see the responses on the smart board if I ever miss them? Yes. So I know we're a little bit too large for collaboration today. You can collaborate in real time with up to 50 people. So we're right at 50. So we're a little big. Um, but if you were, and I'm going to talk about sharing at the very end to share the different ways that you could do this with students. But if you were to be collaborating with students in real time, you would see their little name next to their cursor, you would see their cursor moving around, you would know who is in your design, you would see in real time what that looks like. So yes, you would see all of the things. 
What you won't see is like um, if they use a text box or a shape, like their name isn't necessarily attached to it, um, unlike a sticky note where it does have the name, but you can see everything that's happening in real time. So hopefully there, and I'll show, talk about different ways to do that too. Yeah. So quick flow shapes are kind of fun. Again, think brainstorm, mind map, timeline, chart, um, just different ways to kind of organize information there. So, so you have those sticky notes that you can sort, you have those shapes um, where you can add the um, different quick flow options. You can always turn quick flow off as well the same way. And then under whiteboards, we also have a section that pops up that says whiteboard graphics. These are just some kind of responses and reactions. So if you wanted to like upvote someone sticky or respond, they kind of give you those up front here as well. But everything else works similarly to any other Canva design type. You have photos, videos, frames, shapes, graphics. You can add animated graphics. You can see this one's animated here. Again, you have all of the same tools. That's kind of a nice, easy way to be able to think about, you know, you're just giving more space to those things like brainstorms, mind maps, collaboration, formative assessment, whatever it might be. So same thing on the left, you also have text, you have uploads, you have draw. You can hand write or draw over any Canva design, including whiteboards. So if you had your clear touch pen or you have a trackpad or however you touch screen device, you can, you or your students can hand write and draw. You can change the color of the pen and the width of the pen and things like that. You can, my favorite thing with draw is if you draw a shape and it's not super good, if you hold at the end and don't let go, it will like snap into that shape. It can draw shapes or lines and it will hold, 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 and it will snap into that shape. So that's kind of fun too. So hold, 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 and it will snap. So you can, again, draw, I could highlight over things, I can use those tools to be able to draw, handwrite, things like that. And then you have, again, all of the same apps and tools as well, if you needed to translate or you wanted to add other, like a QR code or for whatever reason, add any of our other apps, you also have all of those available. Um, the other thing I want to share just really quickly when it comes to whiteboards, you can do this in any design, but again, this is really helpful when it comes to things like whiteboards is when you click on an object as you're building a whiteboard maybe for collaboration, in that same small floating toolbar, one of the other tools that I really like is this option to lock. This is helpful if you have a collaborative whiteboard and you don't want the background moving around on students or things like that, you can go in and you can lock something. With a lot of our shapes, you'll see two different options for lock, lock position and lock completely. What that means is, for example, let me go over here where it's a little easier to see. If I had something like maybe a sticky note or a text box, if I lock them and I choose just this lock position, what it means is I can't move this, I can't change it, I can't delete it, but I can type in it. So if I wanted to have certain places where I want students to type or I wanted them to type in the sticky note without moving it, I can choose that lock just the lock with the pencil. And then again, it's locked down, but I can still type in it. If you wanted, for example, the background not to move, so I wanted these Venn diagram circles to stay where they are, I can go in and I can lock it completely. And now it's completely locked. What I will say is that me, even though you have locked it down, when you allow students to come in and collaborate, they all have editing rights to the design. So can they unlock this? Yes. Is it more of a deterrent though? Also, yes. So just keep that in mind that it doesn't mean they can't unlock it, but it does kind of help keep things in place as you're creating. So that's an option as well. Thinking about tools, the last tool I want to share a little bit is um, has to do more with it's our AI tools. When you think about whiteboarding and doing this collaboration with students and all of those things, and then what happens when you're done? So you have a number of things. Um, obviously, you could read everybody's sticky note. You can use that sticky note sorting to sort everything that was on your collaboration. But a little bit of a newer tool that I think is so beneficial, especially for whiteboards, is kind of hidden. And it's here under resize. So under resize, if you go to the bottom, again, it's kind of hidden because it's under there. But you have a button that says transform to document. When you choose transform to document, it's going to ask you what you want. So maybe I want a short summary of main ideas. So maybe I just want to know what the main ideas are or common themes. 
I can choose to transform to document. So again, I was a middle school teacher. I think about this, if I did exit tickets with five classes, it would be a lot to synthesize and go back through that information quickly. So I can say, I just want a short summary of main ideas. AI will scan all of the text and it will just give you a shortened condensed version. So a little bit easier to read. So again, that option can be really helpful if you have a big brainstorm or you do it with multiple classes and you just want to capture those main ideas. Or even if you want to capture all of the text, but it's really hard to synthesize every single sticky note and go through and read them, you can go to resize, transform to document. I can choose all text as an option, organize all of this text, transform, and then it will take all of the text and organize it for me as well. So transform to document, can, again, you can do this in slides, you can do this in other design types, but I do think it has such a great opportunity in um, whiteboards to help organize that information a little bit. So those are some of the main tools. Timers are also built into whiteboards, so I should have said that. You do have timers built into the bottom as well, into presentations and whiteboards. Let's talk just a little bit about sharing, and actually we might... Um, test it out just a little bit too. So under share, this is where everything is going to happen. So under sharing, you have some different options when it comes to sharing and publishing. Under share, you um, can type in someone's name and share. When it comes to whiteboarding, we're gonna use this link. This is gonna be the key here. So under the collaboration link, when you drop this down, every design is always private to you unless you choose to share it. So when I drop this down under only you can access, I can change this to, this should be the name of the school that you're a part of, so your school team. So I can change it so anyone in my school can edit. If I wanted to work with my students, I would take it. I would copy this link. I would paste it in um, Google Classroom or wherever you're communicating with students. And that would allow your students to hop in and all be editing in the same design. So changing the collaboration link to your school name means anyone can edit. And then the next one, if I take that down and drop it down again, is anyone with the link. So students are locked into their school team, but if you wanted to collaborate with people in another school outside of just your school team, you could take that. Anyone with the link can edit and edit together. So anyone in my school or anyone with the link. So I'm actually going to take this anyone with the link can edit. I'm going to drop it in the chat and I'm going to let you guys try to hop in. Again, there's nothing really in here, but if you want to see what it looks like in real time to collaborate, you can. All right. So I'm going to let you all hop into that. It kind of gives you an idea of what that looks like with collaboration. It's a little chaotic. I'm not going to lie. The cursors get a little crazy sometimes. Um, you can see, again, I can see the um, tags, things like that. What I'm going to say is the best thing that you can do with as far as management strategies with your students and what I typically recommend is having something on the page like a stop sign, a home button, a green check mark, anything like that where you can um, have students hover and place their cursor when they're done responding. Um, so for example, let's say we're all responding. These tags are a little crazy. Everyone's doing their thing. Um, if you have something where, you know, we'll put, we'll put something on here. Let's put a stop sign real fast and we can say, okay, you know, we'll put a stop sign up here. When you're done, everybody parks their cursor. So if you take your cursor, park it over the stop sign. And then if you go idle, those tags go away. So it really does help kind of clean that up for those last minute students who are maybe still trying to respond and they're getting a little bit of that sensory overload, having something like a stop sign, check mark, home button, so that they know, okay, when we're done, we're going to park it and we're going to be done. So that's a great option as well. So under share, again, anyone with the link can edit means anyone can edit, anyone with a Canva account, you would most likely, you could keep it within your school parameters as well. Another really great management strategy that I always share is you can always take this and switch it from anyone can edit to can view. So if I switch that, what it's going to do is it's going to lock you out of editing. So that way, maybe it's going a little crazy. Maybe you don't want them collaborating after they leave your classroom or after you're only giving them 15 minutes to do something. You can always come in here and change it from can edit to can view. It will allow you to continue to see 
what is in your design without continuing to edit. The other thing I will say is sometimes teachers do this to me and sometimes students do it as well. They will go in here and, and a teacher or a student will change this to can view and everybody gets locked out. You as the owner of the design will never get locked out. So you can always change it back to edit, do a quick refresh and kids can get back in. So just a side note for that. So link sharing is going to be your friend here when it comes to collaboration. Yes, really great. And again, at the top, I don't know if it was easy to see. You can see who has dropped into my design. I can see in real time who's in here, who's creating kind of what you're doing. I can zoom out and see we have some commenting going on. That's really fun. So you can add comments to things as well. This is great. So that comment bubble, if you click on a sticky note, a text box is right here. There's also some reactions where you could leave for students, things like that. Good question. Can you share with different groups? If you wanted to do it in small groups, you would, um, I would take anyone with the link can edit, put it in Google Classroom and have one of each person in each group, click it or make multiple of them and share each one with a small group. Like you could have design group one, group two, and then share each link in Google Classroom. Um, but you can share this link with as many people as you want. You could do the same whiteboard for five class periods. The one thing I will say with that is if you do the same one for five class periods, for example, if some of you today were just to close your laptop and walk away, it won't log you out of this design. So there will, you would still be in here, which means there's only, you can only have 50 people in the design at a time. So if you did this in a group, you know, classroom where you wanted multiple people, but you were going to max out that 50, that's where it gets a little tricky. I hope that kind of makes sense. So you can share a whiteboard as many times as you want. You can have multiple for small groups, lots of different ways to do that as well. Okay, the last thing I'll share is that, um, and this is a really fun tip for things like those resource hubs, collaborative hubs, things like that, is you can embed things like videos and slides right into your whiteboard. So let's say I have a video on YouTube. If I grab the URL from the video and I copy it, I go back to my whiteboard, which now I've lost. I go back to my whiteboard and I click on my whiteboard and I right click and I paste or control V. I can add that video right to my whiteboard. So you could have a video and then have students responding with sticky notes, things like that. So it will play right in there if you double click. You can also do the same thing with articles. It doesn't usually embed them, but it will anything with a URL. So you can take the URL copy not in a text box, just paste right on the page. The other thing you can do it with is something like slides. So if I were to create slides in Canva, I can go to share. Public view link is the key. That's your published version and copy. I can go back to that whiteboard. Again, right click on the page, choose paste, and it is going to embed those slides. So it's going to think about it. So then now these slides are interactive. So students could look at slides and then respond and things like that. Or you could have slides and videos and everything in one big hub. You can also share a whiteboard using that public view link, which means no one can edit it, but anyone, even if they don't have a Canva account, can view it. So if I take this one and share the public view, I can still zoom in. It functions just like a whiteboard does. My video would play, my slides are interactive, but I could, so I can view everything without actually being able to edit and kind of in that published mode. So those are a couple of little extra tips and tricks um, when it comes to kind of creating and those types of things. I appreciate y'all and thank you for spending your afternoon with me and I will um, get everything to you tomorrow, Kathleen. Thanks so much, y'all.